Hey guys, Addie here. I am 37 weeks pregnant tomorrow, so 36 still today. Um, but I am in the zone to make freezer meals for after baby comes. I'm stocking up my freezer to make sure that we are, you know, able to be as hands-free as possible once baby comes. I have done this with every kiddo, so I have done this three times previously. This is baby four. This is the fourth freezer meal prep that I have done. Each time I learn something a little bit new and test out different recipes that I like, don't like, how they cook. So this is iteration number four. This year I am doing something a little different. I actually got this book for Christmas last year. It's called Seriously Good Freezer Meals. So over the course of the last several months, I've been making recipes from this book to see what I like, what I don't. And now I am coming up with a plan to make about 15 of them today for kind of freezer meal prep day. So last time I had a baby and I did this, I went through and I wrote up a whole blog post about which recipes I was using, my plan to cook them, how I was doing it. So I'm gonna link that blog post here because for the most part, it's the process is the exact same, just the recipes are a little bit different this time because I'm using them from this book. Um, but I will link that because again, process is the same. If you wanna know how I do it, that's how you do it. And the first tip I can give you, I'm gonna try to give you as many tips as I can. The first one I can give you is basically to make a plan. Even this book here has a section on like 30 meals to make and it gives you the whole prep guideline. It breaks down the grocery list and the pre-prep you can do, the prep, all of that, which is so great if you like all the recipes in here. But the problem with that I have, even with other ones you can find online, is that I don't always like the recipes in here. For one, I don't love chicken-based dinners. I think when you reheat them, they turn out dry and chewy, and I hate chicken like that. So I don't like that, and a lot of them are chicken-based. I also don't like red sauce-based things, and a lot of them have red sauce pastas, lasagnas, things like that, and I just don't like red sauce. So it's very hard for me personally to find a plan that is tailored to what I like, this one has um, several that I do like, but it double batched a lot of them, and I just only want single batch. So basically, even though there's a plan laid out here, I still had to go through and update all the ingredients to make sure I wasn't buying too much. I had to update the pre-prep so that I wasn't prepping the wrong things. I had to take out ingredients for the meals I'm not doing. For example, we don't eat much fish here. So making the dill tilapia tacos, that would be a waste at my house. We don't eat a lot of pork. That would be a waste. The chicken dish would be a waste. So You know what I mean? So definitely, no matter what plan you find, if you find a plan online and it needs to be tailored to your needs, make that plan. If you just pick a few recipes, like I've done previously for the three times that I've done this previously, you can look at my plan. You can take the recipes you like and make a plan from there. You know, whatever you you desire. Today is prep day just for dinners. I have done previous prep days for breakfast. I have waffles in the freezer. I have French toast in the freezer. I have pancakes in the freezer. I have breakfast burritos in the freezer. I have, breakfast is like one of those most underrated things, I swear. Breakfast, especially handheld ones, or things you can give the kids on the go. So, I just can't tell you. Make sure you do breakfast, that's another tip. Um, I have shredded meat in there for to make easy lunches and stuff. So I've done some prep already. This is this the big dinner prep day. Um, next thing, next tip, tip number two, is once you pick your recipes and you make your plan, before you actually go for cook day, so like last night I did this, I went through and read each recipe. Got familiar with it, I read through the plan, just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. There is a pre-prep on this, so it basically tells you, you know, you can peel onions in advance, you can wash carrots in advance. And so I did that. This is the stuff I did last night. I washed my cilantro, I got my onions peeled, I washed my celery and carrots, got those all ready to be prepared. Another thing you can do in advance here is get your freezer bags labeled. That is gonna save you a lot of time. You'll know exactly where things are going. And then again, another thing 
is to have the tools that you need. So these bag holders, when you're doing a big prep day, these are so great. Having your pans ready, extra bags if you need it, your permanent marker, having a little stand here that can hold your recipe book. I like this one because it has clips so you can easily save pages and flip back and forth. Having this food chopper to be able to easily dice, slice, quarter, whatever I might need to do. Having my cheese pre-grated. All those things and having the right tools are gonna make everything so much easier. I did also pre-make all my chicken last night, so I have shredded chicken in the fridge and diced chicken in the fridge, all ready to go for these meals. And the last thing I did as I was going through the recipes was pull out all of the ingredients and put them aside so that I'm not going all over the kitchen to try to find things as I'm cooking. They all should be right here. I've been as cold as a bucket of ice. I've been trapped like curious mice. kids if this is not your first baby you're prepping for make sure to have a caretaker your husband whoever who can watch them while you do this even better if they actually leave the house for a little bit and leave you undisturbed highly highly recommend having your own space when you're prepping these meals my next tip would be to make sure that you have two sets of measuring spoons and measuring cups because you know, you'll have dry ingredients, you'll have wet ingredients. Once you're measuring, spoon gets wet, you're not gonna wanna touch it with the dry. So if you have at least two sets, it makes it so much easier, a lot less washing you have to do between, you know, sessions. I actually have three sets um, of spoons and two sets of cups, and I'm asking for more for Christmas because I do cook a lot, and so even when things go like in the dishwasher, and then I don't have them, and you know, it just is the way it works out. So if you cook, it is worth the investment to get some nice ones. I'm getting ready to seal my first little batch here. I made two batches of cilantro lime chicken taco mix. So um, two things. One, when you are getting ready to seal these up, you want to get as much air out as possible. It will yield the least chance of freezer burn, of 
just like holding the freshness and being the best meal. So get as much air out as you can when you are like going to seal it. And secondly, sit when you can. So right now, this is a part in the process that I can sit. And so I am doing so because let me tell you when I say being in the kitchen all day on your feet, especially when you are 36, 37, 38 weeks pregnant, it is hard on your feet, it is hard on your back. So sit when you can, I just have a little seat here and whenever I can, I will just take a minute to sit on it and give my feet and back a little rest. You can, if you really want to, you can get like a little straw and you can um, put it in the little corner of your baggie, like the last little section, and you can literally squeeze or suck the air out. And it will get just that little bit of extra air out that you might not want. You don't have to do that, but just if you really wanna be really good about the air. Um, and so also going along with the sit when you can, wear comfy clothes, wear comfy shoes. Your comfiest shoes you have and wear shoes because even though you're at your home, you don't have to wear shoes necessarily, but if you do, you'll get that little extra padding and support on your feet. That will be a game changer in the long run after hours of doing this. So again, little tips here and there. So I've got these done and remember, as I said, Make sure you label beforehand and don't just label with the name of your recipe, label with the instructions for cooking too. So this one is basically thaw, reheat, and then you can also label it with what you wanna serve it with. Serve with corn tortillas, cilantro, lime wedges. You know, just to trigger for your mind on cooking day, here's what I need to have in my pantry if we're gonna have this meal. And then another tip would be, um, when you go to do this, guys, make sure that you have room in your freezer to put these things. Like you need room to be able to put them. And when you put them in, freeze them nice and flat. Find a space, clear a space in there, or get a cookie sheet and put them on it so that when you store it in there and you first freeze it, it is nice and flat. It will save you so much space, you'll be able to fit so much more in your freezer. And when you go to pull it out, you can easily read the things on the front. Definitely, definitely make sure you do that. All right, so that was cilantro lime chicken. Now I am moving on to teriyaki chicken. When you're making these freezer meals, another thing that can happen is it gets crazy very, very quickly. And that's totally fine, it's gonna happen. Um, but one thing I do to kind of eliminate on some of the dishes is I reuse bowls and things whenever I can. So like this bowl right here is what I used for the cilantro lime tacos to kind of mix it all together. I just gave it a rinse in the sink, I didn't wash it, wiped it out, and then now I'm reusing it here. So just it avoided me pulling out another bowl, another thing to wash, unless you have like a dishwasher who's sitting at the sink while you um, are, are cooking, which most likely we do not. Um, I would recommend doing that. Couple other things. So on meal prep days, if there's something that needs to go in a skillet, I prefer using my cast iron over anything else because when you are done, you just wipe it out to clean it. Again, it's just easy to move on to the next thing if there's another meal that's gonna need to have some sort of like, you know, skillet action before going into your bag. And then secondly, on meal prep days, even if you like to have fresh garlic, you know, normally and press it and dice it yourself, on prep days, get yourself anything you can to make it easier. The pre-minced garlic the ginger paste rather than the um, you know ginger that you have to peel and then chop yourself or grate or whatever it is. The pre-shredded cheese rather than the blocks that you shred yourself. Those are all things that I normally do you know, myself. I shred my own cheese usually. I usually like to um, grate my own garlic and my own ginger and that sort of thing. But on meal prep days, just make it easy on yourself. It's what I need Now if you wanna get the best of me Are you smiling? That's for sure Funny how you had the best of you I don't know if I'll make it home I don't know But like I care All I know Sound up this goal Only know I want the best
Just finished up everything is now pretty much a disaster but my kind of final tip to you is if you have someone who is willing to clean up for you give it them the chance to do that if your husband or partner or whoever will do clean up then just let them do it sit down put your feet up give yourself a break that's what I would say to do if that's not the case and you don't have someone who's helping you clean up um, then I would say Take a break yourself first, sit down for a little bit, listen to a song, do something, um, and then clean up after that. I know that can be hard because you, once you sit down, you don't necessarily want to get back up, but you've been on your feet for so long, like just give yourself and your body a break so that you can function later in the night. I, I promise you, you really need it. Um, and now, that's it for the video. Questions in the comments below. I'll have the blog post, blog post linked so that you can kind of see and take a deeper dive into exactly what I cooked. But I guess if you are curious, today I made two batches of cilantro lime chicken tacos, two batches of teriyaki chicken, a batch of chicken tortellini soup, a batch of beef barley stew, a batch of French dip sandwiches, a brown sugar meatloaf, a honey pork chops. I did um, two batches of barbecue ribs. I did a bacon pork tenderloin, some a batch of maple Dijon chicken, and a coconut cashew basil curry soup. So that is what I made today. It's all already in the freezer and stuff, and that's it. So I hope this gives you motivation. I hope my blog post can help you with your planning and prep, and I swear this just makes postpartum life so much easier. So that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.